Hi, Carrie. Um, this is my how to get started on uh, dump painting part two. Uh, I mean, if you're new to dump painting, you might want to check out my part one video where I show the supplies that you need to, to get started. And so now we're on to the technique. Uh, in my earlier video, I explained the difference between light bodied, medium bodied, and uh, heavy bodied acrylic paints and how to add the poor medium to them. So the light body is one part paint, one part poor medium, and the mediums one part paint, two part poor medium, and the heavy duty body is one part paint and three parts paint medium. So I just thought I'd show you the di three different ones and I would um, mix up three, three of these uh, showing the difference here soon as I can open this one. So what I'm going for is something kind of dark. Um, I'm used, I got this um, dark gray that I mixed up. I actually mixed it with black, purple, and a little bit of white. Um, and then I thought I'd do the silver and the black and the purple. So I want about four ounces of this. So I'm going to do about, ooh, that is watery. That's what I get for not stirring it. Or shaking it. Okay, so I want about two ounces of this paint. That's probably actually this, this whole little bottle. Okay. All right. Now my poor medium, I give a little concoction or a little recipe. Um, this is what my little recipe I put in this big container just because it's easier to pour out of than this big mixing bowl that I have. But anyway, I use three parts. I'll just show you for those who didn't watch it. I use three parts Floetrol, two parts pouring medium, and one part all-purpose glue. So that's my, my little mix. So I'm going to add the two ounces of pour medium. Okay, there's that one. And I'll stir it all after I get them all poured. So I want about only about three ounces of the black because I already got some dark colors going on here. So I add about one ounce or a little bit more there. Now I'm not measuring anything. I'm just kind of eyeballing everything. Um, if you need to measure then you know in the beginning I d definitely I would recommend measuring. Especially tell you Till you get um, used to it. Okay, and I probably put more than more poor medium than I should have. Okay, so now this one's one to three, so we need a lot less paint. These actually I found on Amazon when I bought them. They were a hundred dollars for a set of twelve. Now there's sixty or fifty, fifty or sixty dollars on for the twelve, and they last a long time. So. Uh, I would recommend these actually if you can afford fifty dollars you know I would recommend getting those ones so here I'm gonna add three my three ounces to get up to four ounces okay there we go stir sticks and I always keep a little cup of water around with me because sometimes um, your paint might be too thick. And I'll go over consistency in a second. And a little water helps um, for the consistency. You don't want to add more poor medium than you need to. Um, this consistency looks good. Let's see about this one. This one's good too. I'll just see if I can't get a closer up to it. Okay, so with this consistency, you want it to run freely off of your little um, stir stick, and you want to be able to make a ribbon in your in your um, paint that disappears within a second or two, which this does. This might be just a little bit too thin. That's probably because of the fluid that came out, but even, you know, this is pretty thin, actually. 
I'll work with it, but maybe I'll show you on the black. So you can see how thicker, how much more thick this is. Um, you can see the ribbon a little bit better. So that's the actual consistency that you want to try and go for. If it's a little bit too thin, you know, it's not the end of the world. Usually when I have an issue with thickness, it's this, these sax ones because they're so heavy bodied. But we put quite a bit of um, pouring medium into it, so it should, should be okay. I might have to add a little bit of water to this one, we'll see. And these colors will dry darker. Okay, no, the consistency is pretty good too. If you see, you can see it. Makes a ribbon, disappears pretty quickly. Just what we're looking for, so that's good. Alright, so I got my four colors here. Um, let's see if I'm just thinking if I should add just a bit of white. And I do have that silver for the lighter color. Uh, I think I'll be shy what I need for my cup. So we'll add just a bit of white in there. Mm, looks like I need to mix up some more white. sure this consistency is good too. I find it just so tad thick. I'm sorry for the focus here. So I just add a tad of water to this one. Okay, so now it's, it's better. Okay, so those are going to be my colors. I'm just going to set up my little stand here, and then I'll add the silicone, and then we can get this pour done. So I just use kind of, I just found things around my house that um, I had laying around. I didn't buy anything special. Um, so I like having the ability to turn my my um, art around when I'm doing it. So I took a um, cake stand cake stand that I had at home, and I just covered it in a bag, um, and then taped the, the feet so it doesn't get so I can it doesn't get too dirty. And then I had a hotel pan. Um, this is called a hotel pan back from my catering days. So it actually uh, kind of works pretty good. Oh, and I spilled the black. Oh, gosh. I do this a lot. At least it didn't land on anything tragic. Okay, so uh, this hotel pan back from my catering days, um, it fits a 16 by 20 canvas perfectly. And when I am tipping my paint, or when I'm doing my paint, and then when I'm going to tip it, I'm going to, you know, let it run into this. And then underneath all of it is this little plastic thing um, that goes for underneath a washing machine. It's a washing machine tub or something. goes underneath it, I guess, in case it leaks water. I don't know. I found it on Amazon. It was like 20 bucks, so I bought it. Okay, so I'm going to have to mix up a little bit more black, I think. Okay, use my colors. Well, you can see how much I lost, quite a bit. 
All right. It's already pre-mixed here in this little... Every Sunday or so I go around and I fill up all my all my little containers of paint. I bought these little condiment containers. Um, they're perfect for storing paint in. But, you know, you don't even need the condiment containers. I use water bottles also. Or empty paint bottles. I use so many different things to keep store up my paints. Okay. Just gonna add a bit of water because that other paint was just a bit thick. Now, for the silicone, you know, there's two options. You can use the silicone or you can use the coconut milk serum. Um, or dimethicone. I don't have dimethicone, but I have the coconut milk serum and I have the silicone. I generally use silicone. Um, I have used the dimethicone, but I just, I don't know, just for ease, I prefer the silicone. Just it's what I'm used to, I guess. So if you were to use this stuff, if you had the coconut milk, milk serum and you're going to use it, you're going to do um, two drops per ounce of paint. So these all have between three and four ounces. Maybe this, this one's a little bit more, almost five. You would do for four ounces, you would do eight drops of this coconut milk serum. Now with the silicone, it's a little, it's a little different. It's one drop per ounce. So I'm going to add those now. Okay, and then mixing the silicone, you just, I just do two rotations. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The black needs maybe one more. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start layering my cup here. Um, I like to personally have um, a clean, um, like, I don't mix my paint in my cup. I don't let I don't like pour it from a height and and mix it in like some people do. Um, I just that's just my preference. I'll just show you a couple paintings. So this one right here um, started off as burgundy, black, gray, and a tad of white. And you could see it's kind of pinkish. There's not much of the burgundy left. And the gray. I mean, you could see the black there. Not too much of the white. This one. Oh, sorry. This was this. This cup was stirred. I did two side by side, and this was a stirred cup. So after I layered the the um, colors, I just gave the cup a stir, like um, just a once around stir or an X or or something, um, just to get the colors a little bit coordinated. So this was a stirred. This is the unstirred. So aside from the little speckles, I prefer this look better. You can see the colors that I use much more clearly. Um, they didn't kind of mix into each other. So when I'm doing my, my poured paint, I'm pretty careful with my paints. Um, and I'll show you what I do. So let me see. What am I going to start with? I'll start with purple, I guess. And I'm going to do three layers. Often you don't do, do more than two layers. But because I don't stir them, I... I, I going to do three. So put the first layer in and then you want to contrast your colors between you know something dark and or bright. So between the black, oh, I put this here and the silver. No, that's not going to work. I should have done I should have poured the silver first. So I'll pour the silver last. And uh, maybe like this. Okay, so now I'll do the black. And I'm going to pour on the side of my cup here. So this is how you don't get your paints to, to mix while you're pouring them into your cup. And I'm not worried about these drips on my 
canvas here because it's, the whole thing's getting going to get covered. I'm thinking I should have had a little bit more contrasting colors. No, well, I can't change it now. That those two grays look almost identical. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up and put the silver here. Put the white and then this gray. Okay, so I'm going to dump in the rest of the purple. and then this color. And now is a good time to put on a pair of gloves. So I take my canvas and I put it on top of my cup. And then I flip it all over. And I give it a moment to drain down. Okay, so now I'm just going to lift it up. I'm going to try and go, I'm going to tip it a little bit just to break the seal because there's kind of like a, a vacuum seal here. And then I'm going to lift it straight up trying to, here. Now you can see how the colors are kind of separate. But making great cells. Okay, so now I'm going to torch it. As long as this is drained here. So I'm going to go corner to corner. I'm just going to, hmm, which way do I want to start? I'll start here since I have this little extra there. Sorry, I know you can't see this all very well. Mm. 
Okay, so... I'm going to torch it again. I see some little speckles coming up. I don't like speckles. Okay, so I had a lot of great cells when I started. I think I overstretched this a bit. Um, but I am going to try and stretch out. I have some really small cells here, some small cells here, little speckles in here. So all I'm going to do is kind of tip it back and forth. I'm not going to let any paint come off. Oh, there's a, a blobby. So I don't want, my purpose isn't to to take any paint off the canvas. It's just to, you get the paint moving in one direction and then you give it to the other direction and it just stretches the cells. So that's what I'm doing right now. I usually don't go corner to corner and just tip it off like that. I usually am a little more controlled at it. Kind of go in a little circle and then a bigger circle. Wish I had done that again, not this. But I think once I stretch out these cells, it'll still look nice. And um, don't forget, this will dry darker than it appears right now um, because the, the um, poor medium lightens up the paint because it's white, but it dries clear, so the paint will, will um, dry darker. It's funny how you can barely see any of the white. A little bit here, and here. A little bit here, and in the corner there's white there. A couple little white dots, but... White's not as, and not very present, that's good, that's, I didn't want a lot of white. I haven't done anything with purple in such a long time. I'm always usually red, black, and white, red, black, and white, or blue, gray, and black. Okay, so I'll probably just continue to stretch this for a little bit um, and then I will bring you back, um, I'll uh, videotape it, this when it's dry um, and you, you can see what it looks like. I'll take in some close-ups when it's um, dry, bring you in a little closer now. I'm just going around and you got to make sure all your sides are covered. I forgot to mention that. So you just spin it around, make sure all your sides are covered. And so you can see I got a lot of cells, especially in this area. Um, I really like a few over here that you can see, right? I really like those ones. 
these ones probably some of my favorites I like them when they're more round when they turn into big blobs like this they, they're not I'm not such a fan um, I do like this is here this kind of light kind of purple going through the black I like that there and uh, I like this part too and I, I bet you it'll darken once it is dry but this right here how it uh, is black along and then there's a little row of purple and silver in the middle there I really like that it's kind of pretty um, yeah so uh, these are the speckles I don't like that's why I'm going to continue stretching it uh, but I won't make you watch me do that for half an hour um, not, it's not going to take half an hour but probably another 10 minutes of trying to stretch them out before I put this to dry um, so if you have any questions or comments uh, just leave a comment and I, I will um, respond to them as quick as I can and uh, these are my first little YouTube videos so please be kind and uh, if you want to see how to uh, complete your art varnish it and and uh, get it hanging on the wall just watch my part three I'm gonna varnish a picture and um, I put the backing on all which will take less than 10 minutes I'm sure uh, so uh, and then follow me along subscribe and follow me along as I add up new new techniques to try at home um, you could also leave a comment about any technique that you want me to to try it so that I'll try to help you to walk you through a little bit um, or any color combinations that you'd like to see me try out just leave that too and I hope you have a good rest of your day bye